Hey, welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Al. Before we get into this Blender Sculpt, if you love all things 3D, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so with a large brush size and the snake hook brush, I'm going to be pulling out the mesh because this is going to be the sea creature's tail. And my mesh to start with was just too large, so I pressed R to scale it down. And I will be constantly using snake hook, uh, the elastic deform brush, pressing command R if you're on a Mac or control R if you are on PC, and that will do that remesh function. What I really love about that function is if I press shift R, that's when you see that white grid on the screen. I can dynamically like change and it gives me a visual representation of roughly how large those polygons are going to be. So unlike ZBrush, I just Dynamesh and just kind of guess based on the Dynamesh slider. But this is super helpful if I need more or less polys or if things are a little too dense and things start to lag. I'm going to use Snake Hook and pull out some of these little, I don't know, not really fins, just little flowy bits on this creature. You know, kind of like a, a Chinese dragon in water, maybe. I don't know if that makes sense. Catfish whiskers, how about that? And then you'll notice if I pull too hard, then it, things start to get really wonky and really low poly. So I'll just press Control R to do that remesh function. Currently, I have it set up to behave like ZBrush, which means if I left click and drag outside of my mesh, it's going to rotate. So that's what's going on here. So my setup is not quite the default Blender setup. So less of a tutorial and more of just, hey, join me on the journey. But I am using that optimized version of Blender. So it's just a setting that you can tweak. You can follow the link above to see that video. But it's really helped my sculpting and things are really smooth now. So every now and again, you'll be sculpted in on one side of your mesh. Everything's going great. Everything's right with the world. Sculpt is looking good. And then you rotate around and everything's screwed up on the back. So this happens when your geometry isn't too thin, but you have thin geometry and your brush is just affecting both sides. So to prevent this, you do the following. In your brush settings, if you select front face only, that's basically back face masking inside a ZBrush. So it'll only sculpt on that side of the mesh that you want. So for really thin objects, that's definitely needed. Definitely check that box. I've got the basic shape of this creature and I used Inflate to beef up the belly, tail. It was just a little too thin for my taste. Three brushes that I use primarily are clay strips, snake hook, elastic deform, and I used Inflate ever so slightly, and I will use the draw sharp eventually. So if you hold down Control and Sculpt, you're gonna your brush is gonna do the opposite. So with clay strips, instead of pulling out from your mesh, it's going to carve into your mesh. So keep that in mind. That works with any brush. You can hold down shift as well to smooth. Clay strips gives this really clay-like feel. So if I hold shift and sculpt, it's going to do all that smoothing no matter what brush I have. Using the pinch brush ever so often, pinch in kind of where those bony structures might be on this fish. Definitely, definitely didn't look at any reference anywhere. So this was just a test for me just to see if Blender is at a place with this optimization setting that I have turned on and the ZBrush settings. I can actually do something, so definitely works. I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, so far, everything is super smooth inside of Blender with these settings turned on. This was super enjoyable. And then having the functionality to rotate around my mesh instead of holding Alt or Option to left click and rotate around. It's just like ZBrush in that sense, so. Clay strips hitting those forms just to give it a little more meat. I use the draw sharp to carve in some of those slashes. And then, like I said, clay strips just around each side of those slashes. Make it look a little more meaty, a little more realistic. So with the elastic deform brush, I can come in there and with a larger brush size, that way I don't mess anything up uh, and it's too sharp. I can fix the shape of that underbelly section. And then with the inflate brush, give me a really great, kind of like this fat, chunkiness under the jaw that I went with using the pinch brush to pinch that tail make it a little thinner it's looking great always rotating around your mesh I wanted this one to have very interesting silhouette and I knew the specific angle I wanted to render from which would be primarily the front but I was also going to do a turntable so I wanted to be able to get to look at least interesting from most angles 
And honestly, I'm not super happy with the head, and we're gonna fix it. Using clay strips, I'm gonna fill in those eye cavities and get rid of that. Same thing with the mouth. So if I just am really rough with a large brush, clay strips filled in that hole, and then control R to do that remesh function. Now with the draw sharp tool, I can carve out a mouth. And this is where the, the whole shape of this guy kind of turns into a whale. I really liked where I went with it. So don't be afraid in your sculpts. If you wanna, if you're just kind of free forming it, right? I'm not following any reference here. I'm just kind of going. This is just a test. Don't be afraid to make big changes. Stray from your reference if you need it, because I could make a hundred different changes really, really quickly inside a blender or ZBrush. That's the joy of sculpting. Basically taking a big old blob of clay and doing something new in your sculpture. I'm gonna pull this front of the face out using that elastic uh, deform and the snake hook brush with a large draw size. I really like the snake hook brush in Blender more so even than ZBrush. In Blender, it gives me this ability to like rotate the mesh. In ZBrush, it's like I'm pinching some of the clay and pulling and then I can wiggle my brush. But with this one, if I have a large brush size and I grab it, I can like rotate the mesh a little. It's hard to explain, but it's different and I like it a lot. And now using clay strips, I'm gonna hit that fold of fat just to kind of make it flow into the other wrinkles on the skin. Snake hook, I'm going to refine some of those little floaty bits. I really should figure out what those are called <laughs> on a sea creature. But you know what? I probably never will. Using inflate to beef up some of those floaty bits, repositioning with the snake hook brush, and then I can hold shift to smooth to really sharpen those at the, at the tips. So you notice those little floaty bits that uh, it was really just a block out form, right? I put something in there. That way I know where my sculpt is heading and I always know I'm going to go back to it. Even now, these aren't finished. So just like the flowy bits, the tail was kind of just like a placeholder. I really didn't love it. It was very boring, very static. So with that snake hook brush and the elastic deform, I'm just pinching, pulling. Whenever things get a little too thin, too pulled out, I'll just hold shift and then smooth it away. It's kind of like erasing that snake hook that I pulled out just to get this kind of worn and tattered tail. I think it definitely fits better than the potato tail I had before. Using elastic deform, push and pull with a large brush size, that way I don't mess up my details. And uh, this is me fumbling around with the masking feature. But I finally kind of got it. There we go. So it looks like I have to mask on the mesh first. On ZBrush, I go outside of it and select what I want. But that's okay. This is really just me fumbling around and finally learning. I'm so excited that it. I've been able to sculpt inside a blender. I love ZBrush and I have knocked Blender super hard in the past, as some of you know. But finally, I don't feel constrained inside a blender anymore, which is a good feeling. Because it is a it's great software. And now that I can sculpt, it's awesome. I love it. Still, it's no ZBrush, that is for sure. But it's been enjoyable. And now I'm going to refine some of these floaty bits, is what we're calling them, the scientific term. Using draw sharp, make some more interesting shapes by slashing it. And then with the snake hook, I can come in and break up its silhouette. So the silhouette of this creature has been broken up, these floaty bits, and then I broke up this, the silhouette even more on each individual floaty bit. So the last little section, using the draw sharp brush, kind of go back and forth in different directions to give like uh, slashes. Like this is a a creature that has survived a long time, but it's gotten to many tussles in the underwater world. Using clay strips to build up those forms on either side of those cuts and gashes to simulate maybe scar tissue. And honestly, you can't even tell in the finished product on these cuts on the bottom. But same kind of thing, refining the tail, holding shift because some of that geometry was super thin. It just wasn't needed. Honestly, wasn't realistic either. Well, there it is, folks. That was a lot of fun. So glad that I'm actually enjoying sculpting in Blender now. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe. I will see you next time.